Hi guys, it's week 10 and we are going to focus in this video about the content that you teach or I'm going to call it the message because it has to do with a lot more than just the specific information or standard or um, the content itself. It has to do with how you deliver it and the different resources that you use to um, help you teach that content. So it's what you teach, but it's also what students learn. And I'll explain that in just a minute. We're also going to focus on how technology has changed the message or challenged the message. And the reason is, is because 25 years ago, teachers only had a textbook, really, or some encyclopedias um, to help them teach their lessons. They had one source and they use that as the expert. And this was the, the information that had been vetted by people who would be considered experts in their areas. And so they use that kind of as the Bible for their um, teaching. But that is no longer the case. Um, new media technology has really challenged that message. There's a lot more perspectives. There's a lot more information. But it does make it challenging to determine what to teach. And so... There is now so much knowledge that's available that one person really can't learn it all. And so there have been some people who have started saying that there is a decreased need to know content specifically. And when I think about that, I think about social studies and the dates that things happen, like um, the attack on Pearl Harbor happened December 7th, 1941. Do we really need to know that? Does every kid need to be able to recall that date? Because with the internet, the answer is at your fingertips. And and do we really need to ask questions that are Googleable? Um, I had a guest speaker in one of my classes one time who had, um, they were, it was a first grade classroom and she had an Amazon Echo in her class and her students would ask it questions um, and things that it could answer right away she was teaching them that those aren't questions that we really need to explore all that much because it's a Googleable. You can you can look at the um, information online and you can find it right away. But instead, focusing on those things that are more higher order thinking. So a question like, you know, why was Martin Luther King a good leader? Well, Google can't answer that or Amazon Echo can't answer that. That takes a lot more research and synthesis and creation of things that are higher order thinking. Um, and so, you know, I guess this is a question I can throw out. What do you guys think about that? Is there a decrease need to know the content specifically, the specific details? Um, and a lot of employees or employers are um, relying on that just-in-time training um, to get their, their employees up to speed. So instead of that cold storage training, like I know how to do this and how to do that, or I know these details, it's I'm going to train you right when you need it. Um, and so the P21, that's the Partnership for 21st Century Learning, and they say that there is an increased need to know process skills. So how do I find the information that I need? How can I tell that that information is credible? How can I um, do the things that I need to do or interact with people, those social skills as well? And so that is what those organizations are saying about the message or the content that we teach our students. Um, and so here are some issues created. I already said this, the ever-growing size of the message, the content, there's too much. So we have to make some decisions about what are the most important things to teach our students. Now, the Missouri Learning Standards do that somewhat, but as a teacher, you still make decisions about what you teach and how you teach it. Um, the other one, this one's um, interesting. The content issue um, created by new media could be that there is a hidden message. And so students need to be able to recognize bias. So whenever they're viewing a video online, they need to know who it was created by, what organization is behind it, because there's a lot of times a hidden bias or a hidden message that these um, organizations are trying to put out to people who are viewing their content. Um, another issue could be, and this sounds a little bit um, counterintuitive based on what I said earlier about how big the message is growing to be the size of it, but we tend to make it 
um, to focus on things that we really know and that we really think are important, but that makes the message too narrow or prescribed. If you only look at the curriculum that your school has, or you only look at a specific textbook, um, or you feel overwhelmed by the the amount of information that's out there, you might be tempted to make the message too narrow, address a lot of different um, themes, but maybe only um, making it too narrow and, and very short-sighted. Or another thing could be that the way that we handle the content is not ethical, um, which means, and we've already talked about this in weeks uh, prior to this is that you need to make sure that you're handling other people's information or the message, the content that you deliver to your class with integrity by abiding by content or by copyright laws. Um, but what's really exciting and interesting is that new media really helps um, increase the opportunities for new forms of news, but it also makes us need to teach our students about how to handle those or how to determine whether they are viable pieces of information. Um, just like you're doing right now, you're creating your portfolio on Weebly through uh, your website. And um, it's exciting because it makes it possible for anyone to contribute to the news. Anybody can write about anything that they're wanting to do and put it out there for free, basically. Um, and so that makes it really exciting, but it also makes it to where you have to really think about what um, you're writing, make sure it's truthful, make sure you are um, giving attribution um, citing things that are from other people and all those things. Uh, and, and when you have your students do it, they need to do that as well. Um, RSS feeds and apps help, help you have different content, specific content delivered to you. Um, but this can also limit your view to where you're not taking everything into consideration. Um, and the other thing that new media does is that it helps people to discuss and respond collaborate. It gives different perspectives for the same information and makes people really think about it if you take the time. Um, there was a group out of um, Connecticut called the New Literacies Research Team um, that did some research on what really are the new literacies of the internet. In other words, how can I develop these skills in order to um, find the best information and in order for my research to be profitable online, the time that I spend to be really helpful. And so they said that these were the most important things to um, think about before, before you um, have your students research online. And so they need to be able to have a purpose in, in other words, develop an important question. So just having kids kind of haphazardly go online and try to find things, that's not really very helpful to them. They need to have a purpose or a direction. So developing an important question for their research is really important. And then how to locate that information. You're going to have to teach them, you know, what's a great way to search? What are some good websites that are um, credible? Um, and how to actually use keywords and all those things that some of us probably take for granted. But with kids, they don't always know where to start. And they might look at the very first thing when they do a Google search. The very first thing that pops up, that must be the best one. So we really need to go down now to number three, critically evaluate that located information. So once we find it, how can we really verify that it's good stuff and that's worth using? And we will actually do that um, after you watch this video, you will be evaluating some websites according to some criteria. And then you can actually help your students to do that as well. Um, we also need to teach them how to synthesize across text to determine a likely answer. In other words, they need to know how to take three or four or five, however many different sources of information for similar content and actually synthesize and make sense of them. Not just take one and go with that, not just take two, even if they say exactly the same thing, but make sure that we take into consideration multiple resources to come to the most likely 
answer to our question that started the research. And then the fifth one is we need to help them know how to communicate discoveries with others. In other words, we need to teach them to share their knowledge. And that could be share within the classroom itself, but it also could be sharing with a bigger um, online community, um, sharing with your school community, lots of different things. But knowing how to do that appropriately, that's one of those new literacies that our students need to know. So my question is, does this change what we teach students? students. It should. It really should because they need to know how to do all these things in order to find good um, resources online and get their questions answered um, for the research that they're doing. And that's it.